I wandered into the foyer, wondering where I should be looking for these metals, or even beyond that, if I wanted to look for metals at all. I, would, I wish the last half an hour of scene would have established that for everyone, and we could at least have clear progression as characters. But it was, it was when a gentle touch grabbed my wrist that I snapped to attention and looked to see who had grabbed my hand as I recovered. We have to stick together. Wow, you fucked up immediately, Dave. I can't believe it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the buddy system is for other people. I'm above rules that I set myself. I nodded slowly, remembering what had happened only moments before. You really do need a rest day. I slept so much. Like, so much. Like, I slept, he slept for like 48 hours straight, practically, or, or at least close to that. Then we had the day where we just watched anime, and then got the talk with Benson. And then he slept soundly all night. And then he woke up and talked to Benson, then went back to sleep. He's nothing but rest. I, I suppose so. But that's what the metal finding is for, right? To keep us busy? I don't think that's what rest day means. He continued to stare, sizing me up almost. The longer he did, the more I started to clue in as to what I'd said and what he was wanting to say in kind. Or we could do a rest day. I'm not going to force you to do anything, Dave. I just don't want to see you burn out because you're not giving yourself a chance to breathe. Sal, I cannot stress this enough that Dave's not doing anything. Dave has not. Been Dave doing has not anything used a single brain days. cell in his his extremely extremely empty head. He just has not personally performed any actions for like three or four days. <laughs> what should we do then? If we don't do something, <clears throat> then I'd probably keep wondering about what's happening outside. We can hunt for the metals, but I'd suggest we do that while we do something else at the same time. There's nothing more relaxing than multitasking. Like what? A movie is out because we wouldn't really be we wouldn't really be searching. Plus Orlando seemed to be heading to the rec room already. Okay. Well, what if we go what if we grab Dean and go search somewhere else? You know, grab Dean, the person who's on lookout duty. He seemed to shift, uncomfortable at the idea for some reason. Oh, so Tyson's with Haas and Dean now. Dean has to stick close to Haas and Tyson. He's going to have his hands full already. I think trying to wrangle those two along with finding something he can unwind with while they do dog and cat things. What does that I mean? I think trying to wrangle those two along with some finding something he can unwind with while they do dog and cat things. That is one hell of a sentence. I don't. Strange sent Just I don't even know. I'm not sure what the implications are for half of the characters there. Do and the, the ellipses, as it often does. Suggests euphemism. <laughs> You know, dog and cat things. Dog and cat things. That's what they do. Like cats and dogs. I snickered a little bit at the thought, but resigned the point. All right. Well, then it's just you and me. What did you want to do? Would you like to go to the gym? Why the gym? Exercise sucks. Alright, no gym. But is there a reason beyond exercise sucking? I sighed, throwing my hands up. I guess I'm just lazy. Phys putting in physical effort is hard. Alright, then how about this? Do you trust that I know what I'm doing in the gym? Yeah, Okay. I would say that you know what you're doing. Good, because we're going to the gym. Okay. 
He started leading me downstairs before I could kick up much of a fuss about it, caught in a daze by a sudden decision. With a gentle click, he closed the door behind us so that we'd have more privacy, some privacy, it seemed, as he was already pulling off his shirt. You might, want to, you might want to take off that hoodie. Sure, too, maybe. But why? Because I'm going to get you to do something, and I feel like it might help. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm not really dressed for exercise. Then don't That's be dressed. That's why I told you to undress. <laughs> <sighs> You'll be fine for what we want to do. If you're that uncomfortable, take off more, but it should be fine without ju with just without the hoodie. Grumbling, I did as he said, also pulling off my shirt to copy how dressed he was. So what's the thing? He wandered over to a large punching bag off the side and patted it gently. I want you to punch this. That's... why, though? Before he'd given me an answer, I wandered over to join him, sizing up the bag while he seemed to find the words. I was thinking about the concept of a rest day, what that means. You don't really exercise all that much, and a lot of what's been happening has been running or loafing around. We're on vacation. I'm allowed to be lazy. He shook his head, bracing himself against the bag. Yes, you are, but you need to give your mind a rest. You're a hyena. Your ancestors are cunning, savage hunters capable of impressive physical feats. Being physical is going to help clear your head more than searching for metals will. Wow, Sal believes in bio-truths. Wow, I can't believe you could do this to us. Grumbling, I gave a half-hearted punch at the bag, sighing out. You're thinking spotted hyenas. I'm striped. I was led to believe you were a mix, or is that wrong? No, Dad was spotted and Mom was striped, but like, what does that matter? So, you're more like your mother. Also, that does mean that they are your ancestors. <laughs> my eyes narrowed a little. I've been compared to my to Dad a whole bunch and, didn't, and took pride in it, but it was rare for someone to compare me to Mom. I didn't know how it made me feel, but something felt... off. I'm more like my dad. Are you sure? He was a police officer and part of that was being active. He worked out at the gym we met at, right? You're just a couch potato. I frowned, slamming the bag a little harder as I scowled at him. Am He's not- He's getting nagged. Right, yeah, he is. It's working. Roswell and Orlando are more, are more like couch potatoes. So then why the hesitation? Punch the bag. I did it again. Not as hard uh, as last time. Punch that bag. Punch that bag. But the frown didn't leave my face. <laughs> I don't like punching the bag. Give me a reason why, Dave. Tell me why don't you want to punch the bag. Is this like a power move? <laughs> Especially with that face. Before I could hit it again, I sighed out, flexing my hand. Because I just don't. I don't like anger. I don't like being angry. I don't associate punching a bag with anger. No response came from Sal when I glanced away although he made no effort to stand away from the bag. I don't like thinking that I can be someone that does violent things. Bad guys do violent things. I'm a good guy. <laughs> and I'm seven. Is Tyson a good guy? The question made me freeze, and I stared at the bag, wondering. Remember, violence is just applied physical force. When I didn't move, he continued. I 
I want you to imagine this bag as someone or something that you hate, Dave. I want you to pretend that the bag is evil. My brow furrowed further as I took in the surface of the bag and found myself quickly jabbing at it again the moment Jack crossed my mind. Good. Now what makes you hate this thing? I hate that I can't go outside. Again, I punched the bag, and again with every comment I made the gr with growing intensity. I hate that I feel powerless. I hate that he got the better of me. Let it out, Dave. This would have been a fun vacation otherwise. Was it? Was it? Was it? A, was, were things going well before then? Is that the thing with the vault and the dying? I'm sick of it. Just let me have some peace. I'd stopped punching it near the end. Bearing claws ready to maul the bag in front of Sal before I realized how riled up I was getting. My heart was beating quickly in my chest and I was out of breath. Rather than go at it with claws, I clenched my fist and threw one last punch, impacting the bag a little too hard and yelping as I pulled my hand away. Are you alright? Just went a little too hard there. Shaking it off, I jabbed the bag again, although a little less enthusiastically. Sometimes I just wish I wasn't so weak, you know? Exercising just reminds me of that, and I avoid it. You're strong in other ways. Stupid ways. Yeah, but it's not going to keep me alive, Sal. The comment had made me him uncomfortable. I could tell in the way he shifted his glance and pulled his gaze away from me. It might, but the alternative is training, even if it reminds you of your worst traits. Yeah, well... It's working for Tyson, anyway. Becoming friends with Hoss, opening up more about his pro... Becoming friends with Hoss. When did that happen? I guess it must have just been in that one scene where they watched anime and Hoss heckled him and then rubbed his head and then ran away before Tyson beat him up. That's that we we're supposed to take that they're friends now from that. They're friends now, I guess. I mean, I guess I guess they're more, friends now is, because Hoss was like, I'm not going to kill you, Tyson. I guess that does make Tyson <clears throat> and Hoss more friendly than Sal and Dean. That is true. Or right. best friends. I can't. <laughs> I can't critique it. It's just as the, I, I'm in the middle of my fever throws and I need to just no, move it's just, past this it. This is the definition of show don't tell is that you're, you need to establish friendship via rapport and interactions and not just tell us people are friends now over and over again. Opening up more about his problems. He didn't say much when we arrived, but whenever those two are together, they're just chatting away. Since when? <laughs> Since when? In what scenes do they talk to each other more when than a line ever or two? Happened? Write those scenes. Oh my god. Instead of telling us that they're happening. <sighs> write those scenes instead of the half an hour conversations about logistics that happen the whole... The, that's the whole game. There's no half an hour. That's the whole game. <laughs> Do you reckon they'll... Uh, they might, you know... Date? <laughs> wow! We're going fast! <laughs> Just throw out any connection that Dave and Tyson have that might be pointing in that direction and just go straight for, so, uh, Tyson and Haas, are they like a thing? I saw them have a conversation once. That's like groundbreaking. I don't think so. Mostly, I just think those two have found someone they can unwind around and enjoy the company of. Dog and cat things. Part of that made me feel strange. As if I were lacking in some way, given how long Tyson had only had me to talk to. Was I a bad brother? Some people just need something specific in a friend for them to be like that with. Dean's like that with me. And I can promise there's zero interest in us dating each other. Yeah, there also seems like there's zero interest in you being friends as well. <laughs> <laughs> then who's that person for me? Only you'd know that for sure. Orlando, maybe. Roswell's an option. Maybe what you have with Tyson could also work. I, mm, uh, 
Why Orlando? It really doesn't seem like we even know Orlando that well, even well, though allegedly we do. We just cuddle. We cuddle with Orlando. Roswell is an option that's just upsetting because I we're he's obviously clinging to us, but it's like uh, we're not gonna. He's he's just not great. We also like skipped past Dean, the specific person that he's mad at us for stringing along, supposedly, and now he's encouraging us to date someone else. Grimacing at the thought, it collapsed against the punching bag while Sal continued to support its weight. Is it normal to feel flawed? I would say so, yes. He patted the punching bag and stepped back, scratching his chin. But feeling flawed just means you have room to grow. You have things left to learn. Is that what it means? You definitely don't outgrow most of your flaws. They're just two you, you can be. I think I like being flawed. I couldn't imagine what it'd be like to just be perfect, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, you literally just said being flawed means you have room to grow, which ostensibly means outgrowing your flaws. So, I mean, wouldn't like that be the end goal? To, yeah, like everyone's going to become perfect at some point. But think about not having to worry about everything if you're perfect. Things would just be awesome all the time, right? Definitely. That is what would happen. You have to factor in everyone else, too. If the people around you aren't perfect either, they'll already make enough imperfections that being perfect won't matter. Uh, hmm. What? This is one of those things where it, like, sounds smarter than it is. It's, it's one of those, like, sort of, like, thought experiment cul-de-sacs, like Benson teasing us that one of our friends is the murderer and then weird, and then just backing off. Yeah, I'm just like, where, what, where are we going here? What's, what's this conversation? Is that why you like me? Because I'm imperfect? Not exactly, but yes, you're imperfect in the perfect way. Yeah, that's again not really <laughs> saying anything. That's just no. nonsense. I giggled to myself, having spoken without realizing what I'd said until Sal had already <laughs> replied. As I did, it seemed to click as to what he'd responded to. That was not very nice, Dave. What? I think he said something, but it, we didn't get to hear it because we're not privileged in that way. We don't know what he said? Is that... It wasn't this? It's something else? What? I'm sorry, I just... Knowing that I was liked, faults and all, just felt nice. No, he, he is referring to, is that why you like me? Okay. As being the not oh, nice that. comment. Gotcha. I guess it's because it suggests that Sal likes him, likes him, is what he means. Yeah. Which doesn't, isn't actually what he said. Because he it's not romantic to imply that you you like your friends. <laughs> Well, I think he's trying, I think he's like making fun of the fact that Orlando was like, I think I potentially could maybe possibly have a romantic crush on you, but the, it's only the potential that is there, you know, like that yeah. whole thing. But the language just didn't suggest much, so it's just, it took me a month to register what he's even talking about. Yeah. Do you like me for mine as well? Kinda. Maybe not the best thing to lead with, Dave, but okay. Yeah, you're all right, whatever. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't like to think of them as flaws. They're just differences. Go on. Like, you're bigger, green, uh... What's, this, what's your personality? <laughs> I chuckled nervously, scratching my head and not really knowing where else to go with what I'd originally been thinking. I guess what I'm saying is that I like that we're the same but different. 
oh okay <laughs> they just acquiesce to that immediately just, just gonna give up like okay he's not, he's gonna not, he's not gonna say anything he seemed to take that as well he seemed to take that well but I wasn't sure frowning I leaned against the punching bag and almost fell over without Sal supporting it still I mean you get it right I like you for you I know what you mean, Dave. Don't worry, the feeling is mutual. He reached out and placed his hand between my ears and atop my head. No rubbing, just letting it sit there with that smile on his face. Choices. He's gonna grab him. He's gonna grab him, he's gonna get mad at me. For doing emotions, even though he hugged me for the entire night. <laughs> Hug. I wandered, I wandered in... It's just not you, control F the word wandered. It's just there's so much and it doesn't fit in half <laughs> the situations. Just I leaned in. I embraced yeah. him. Just there's so many normal words to put here. I wandered <clears throat> in and wrapped my arms as best as I could around his middle. And he quickly returned the hug. Now gentle now gent now gentle patting my head. There wasn't anything that needed to be said here. We understood, and that was enough. If he broke away, when we when we broke away, Sal looked around the gym again before turning to me. Do you feel a little better working your body? I don't know. Why don't you work my body? A okay, little. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sal nodded to himself, starting to wander away to look at another machine. But I stopped him. But I, that's that's a correct use of wander away. I'm just sensitive yes. to it because they've said it so much. <laughs> He is literally actually wandering her away, which is when you aimlessly move to look and look around as opposed to half the time, which is like I wandered into the foyer, the my destination. <laughs> but I stopped him by grabbing him much like he'd done to me in the foyer. Thanks, Sal, for this. You're welcome. We continued through until lunch, where we took a break and then spent the afternoon in the conservatory. <laughs> At one point, Sal gave me a message as I watched the world pass by from the window, half expecting to see Jack or someone else emerge, but nothing did. Then we played cards, and Dean stopped by to check in on us, needing a short break from Haas before going back to his designated partner. That's not how the buddy system works, buddy! <laughs> you, don't, you don't get to just split up when you feel like it. <laughs> We invited him to stay, but for safety reasons, we resigned, he resigned himself to being, to being talked to about anime until dinner. Haas's only discernible personality trait. I'm bi and I like anime. Those are <clears> two <throat> things. <laughs> I, feel, I felt bad. But Sal was quick to remind me that Dean would benefit from learning to deal with people like Haas. He was likely going to have nephews someday. And this is something like practice. Oh, I just got mad at Haas. I just remember that Haas prides himself on being a human on a being a human lie detector, and he did not defend Dave regarding the body, which he should have because he's supposed to know when people are lying. It's his third character trait. Actually, as we have learned here, uh, being uh, being best friends with Tyson is his third character trait. It knocked <laughs> it knocked being a no! human lie detector off the list. He lost that perk like a <laughs> darkest dungeon character. It's like a Pokemon learning a new move, and he has to forget yep. an old one. <laughs> yep. When we all gathered for dinner, it was almost as if there wasn't a homicidal rabbit in the woods. That's a that's a very funny line to put in several days after the homicidal rabbit where we've been ignoring him the whole time. <laughs> like you suddenly remembered that we were from ignoring the rabbit, which is a little damning because it means it feels like it makes it feel like you forgot about him. We all sat down and seemed to be in higher spirits in general. Benson wandered in at some point and seemed intent always wandering, intent on keeping watch again. Like he was here on purpose, because it was his destination, and not a random wandered destination. Blah, 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 blah. As he walked past, though, I noticed that his expression seemed hollow. It was sadness. It was consuming him slowly, and I could tell the most I could tell for the most part that he was on autopilot. Having been there myself, I was torn between wanting to help 
and give him space, unsure which would be more helpful. As we ate, it bothered me, seeing him like that. I just wanted to help. Part of me wondered if it was any different with him being so much older, or if he'd shoo me away if I tried to do anything. But when dinner came to a close, I resolved myself to at least try. Benson? He was standing as stiff as a board next to the w staring out at the woods, back to the, ha back to the house with a gun in hand. He made no effort to address me when I called out, but I edged out of the doorway and called out again. Benson, are you okay? Probably could. You should really walk up He's to He's gonna Benson. fall over dead with a knife just in his back. <laughs> you, you distracted him and now he's dead. You should really walk up to Benson if you're gonna have this conversation. If you wanna have like a heart to heart over what's eating him, you probably shouldn't yell at him from the doorway. <laughs> just, I'm just imagining the optics of the scene. He was as stone faced as he was at dinner. That thousand yard stare that seemed to stare right through me. I'm all right, my boy. What do you need? That's, uh, that's kind of the question I was going to ask you, sorta. I, I don't understand. I need not want for anything, my boy. Want, maybe, but need? I noticed at dinner that, uh, and I stepped closer and saw the dampness of his cheeks, the mistiness in his eyes. Oh. Come now, Dave. Leave me my dignity at the very least. I don't need to be coddled like some newborn babe. But... Are you okay? I'm very much not okay. Why is it... Okay, sorry. I don't want to break the good moment, but it is incredibly shocking to me that we get a deep character moment of like humanizing Benson who is for all intents and purposes a not really his own character and is just a a tool of the narrative and the plot and yet we have not actually seen a scene like this between Tyson and and Hoss if they're best friends now <laughs> They're friends now. Like just they're besties. The narrative, the narrative priorities Me, here. Me, all my oomphies are very weird. That's all. I just want to call that out because it is, it is just exceptionally strange, right? Like, well, the, we the, plot, have, the, the twist here is that Benson's like one of the main characters, and most of the cast isn't aren't the main characters. They're just yes, background. Our noise friends are literally expendable in this cast. They are the red shirts by comparison yeah. to Benson, who has had actual character development. They're written like Walking Dead characters that could have died last episode, so they can't get too much screen time this episode, and they're going to die next episode. Except they literally Boy. only can be written this one way, because this is like a linear path where they're always alive, but it still feels like that. It feels like those characters that are awkward loose ends that they don't want to invest too many resources in, because they might not always be there. But Benson's always here. He's broken up over his bud. The hand holding his gun trembled, and I froze on the spot. Even without him raising it, it pointed squarely at the earth. It scared me. Hmm. This is kind of what I mean. Like, I like this moment. I'm not criticizing this moment. Yeah. It is just very shocking. That, like, basically what you just said, where it's like, our entire cast of characters is allegedly getting character development and like routing with each other and we're like learning things about them but we get no scenes with them and yet it, this moment also, with Benson which is literally a scene after the first scene where he's like hey I thought of Oswin as my son is hits harder than any other emotional moment we've had in the game so far but also just reading reading ahead this line like it comes across as like very honest and upsetting yes. and like it and rings true in a way that like Sal's way of expositing his trauma doesn't yes yep my son is dead he may not have been my son by blood 
He may not have realized what, that what familial tie we had was as strong as it was. He... Once again, and almost jarringly so, Benson was devoid of emotion again. I apologize. No, it's... it's okay. Reginald is gone. Now to Oswind. I do not know if I'm more terrified of informing Florencia of her brother's passing, or what her reaction may be. Will she be gleeful at the meaning of it all? Apathetic that he's gone? I... Florencia doesn't know? I guess not. I'm so confused by the previous Benson scene. Yeah, I don't why, know. Why did he bring up Florencia and then say he's going to deal with it, but it wasn't Florencia? Was I it don't know, that scene friends? exists just to be cryptic. Was it Haas? Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> if if Haas is girl bossing his way to beating like to, to being the murderer of all of this, then good for him. I am one hundred percent on his side. So strange. He cleared his throat. What professional facade he was trying to maintain was slipping away and fast. I guess we can figure it out when we're out safe and sound. Yes, I suppose that's true. Carefully, he wandered closer and tucked his gun away, placing both hands on my shoulders. Dave, I'm so sorry for everything that my family has done to you. No one should have to suffer like you have. See, he's referring to them in their entirety as his family, so that implies that the statement he made earlier about it being really personal and being a family matter does make it seem like Florencia is the person that he neutralized, which, again, makes the previous statement kind of weird. Yeah, I'm just, I... Just speak in normal terms. I can't tell what's happening in the story. I don't understand. You haven't done anything. It was a weak one, but a smile nonetheless. Oh, how I wish that were true, my boy. Ignorance is bliss, shall we say. You can't it's just not! Keep, we're confused! You can't just keep saying that you're implying that you're actively fucking me over and putting me in danger and refusing to say it to my face while saying you're refusing to say it to my face, and you're gonna say ignorance is bliss? That's deeply insulting. And also just anxiety-inducing at this point, because, like, we can tell what you mean on some level. It's a, it's a bit... It's like he's doing the equivalent of, like, when people time code a reply and you're on your let's play and they're like oh funny you should say that like and they think they're not spoiling <laughs> something and and like the basic fact that they're pointing out a comment you said and then you looking at the uh, the, the thing that you're the time coding instantly does spoil something because you're like oh well then they mean that obviously and that, that's yeah. a spoiler and the people that play coy like that's not spoilers are just stupid and in a similar way, he can't say all the stuff he says that say ignorance is bliss because he's hinting at too much shit already. He's not actually keeping secrets correctly. He's constantly advertising that he's not telling us something, which is a bizarre thing to do. I would like to know, but I don't want to push you. No, you're, push him, Dave. You're hurting. I, more than anyone, should know what that's like even given a couple days ago. Then perhaps someday I shall tell you the story of the Hammond family. I'd like that, but is there anything I can do for you now, Benson? Anything I can help do to help, or...? I would not want to impose, especially given your dislike of being out here after what happened, but would you stay with me just for a little while? Oh, uh, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. It's funny, part of me wonders what it'd be like if Oswin were standing here with us now. What would be different, and part of me can almost feel him here. I wonder if that's a different route. Yeah, almost like a different there's other routes where he could be alive. Silly, isn't it? I've never been one to pay stock into ghosts or spirits as such, but in this moment, the thought is comforting. Yeah, I sometimes think about my dad in the same way, but it's more dreams, I guess? Oh. Yeah. I guess after it all came out into the open, I'm scared that I might not get to see him again, either. All those bottled-up feelings and stuff made those dreams so real. 
when you feel that now you're moving on, it's like losing them all over again. My chest tightened, and my reply came out in a hoarse croak. Something like that. Perhaps it's best to think of it a different way. Perhaps it's best to consider it like the training wheels of a bicycle. I don't think I understand. The insistence with which characters speak in metaphors. Metaphor. <laughs> and then on top of that, the insistence with which characters don't understand extraordinary basic metaphor is shocking. It makes you wonder why everyone speaks in metaphor if it's universally ineffective. <laughs> yes. You can begin to heal on your own without holding on to the crutch that stopped you from advancing. Apologies, I've never been good at these talks. You might be right, though. I don't know, it's just... It's something I don't want to think about right now, anyway. This is itself, and it's like a decent moment, because, like... What happened is, without talking about it, without expositing about it constantly, Dave just quietly stopped dreaming about his dad after the outburst. And then now we're... Oh, yeah, I guess now so. Yeah, and now he's bringing up... We're, they're bringing up this guilt of, like, realizing that he's, like, moving on from constantly imagining his dad and thinking about his dad all the time. And that, in a way, feels like its own sort of betrayal. Like, he's moving past him, and that feels bad. And that's, like, a good thing to acknowledge. Yeah. Especially if you said it, it is up for not a few something I would have put together without... on its own, though, because barely any time has actually passed for us in the session. So the fact that he has not dreamed of his dad since that moment is not particularly. Uh, it didn't seem that out of place. Yeah, he has. Because we dream. went like nine days without him dreaming about his dad. Yeah, so. and then he suddenly started doing it every night when the the story decided to start focusing on it. It was it was an odd moment, but yeah, last night was sad. We just went to sleep and then woke up. That was the night. <laughs> Which hasn't happened yeah, for a now, while. Yeah, now that you bring it up, it, it makes sense, yeah. The problem was, is just that it, with that, you, it's, it is a thing you have to then eventually point out to acknowledge as being intentional because a lot of the plot lines are dropped for ages in a way that feels un, unintentional. Like, when ben, ben, like once upon, we, it's, it's hard to imagine now, but once upon a time, Benson just disappeared for five days and, we were, and it wasn't... I think he disappeared for longer at the beginning of the game than he did during his actual supposed vacation where he was deliberately and explicitly sent away as a plot point. <laughs> you might be right, though. I don't know, it's just... No, that's not for gore. Very well. Truth be told, silence is something I'd prefer currently as well. Shut the fuck up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you still want me to stay? I can. I fear if you do, then I may do more harm than good. Wow, the whole stay with me thing was about 10 seconds, huh? <laughs> like, he just asked him to stay with him, and it lasted, like, a minute or less, right? Don't worry, my boy. One step at a time, and things will get better eventually. Okay. Well, if you're sure. It was that same fragile smile as before. But he wore it all the same. I am. Sleep well, Dave. I headed back inside and wandered up to my room. The house was quiet, without being silent. The others were around, some chatting, some just minding their own business, but how they moved hinted that they were still there. It eased the tightness in my chest that I didn't realize I was still holding. Closing the door behind me, I sighed out and had a shower. For my own sake, I needed to make sure I stayed on top of of that as the routine would keep me focused. I don't think he showered today until now. He just it was musky boy all day. I felt refreshed again the moment I was on my bed. I didn't expect to be exerting myself, but I came I came away better for it. Something I had Sal to thank for thank for. Who you should be with now. You should be with Sal. Remember the buddy system? Don't split up into your soundproofed room in the murder house. As I lay there, I wondered what he'd say. What he'd do if, if I were to wander over to his room and jump into his bed. In the, you know, our, our pre-agreed upon arrangement that we're all supposed to be doing, but you just wordlessly decided to stop doing and are acting like that's normal. The night before, he was expecting it, or at the very least didn't say anything when I was just randomly there without an invitation. But maybe that was taking things too far given he'd still want his space, much like Orlando did. After all, 
He was the only other reptile that I'd experienced cuddling with. The thought made me chuckle, calling myself out for being racist in place of the others beating me to it. What? Okay. Why Why are you sleeping alone? Wait, what? No. Why do you forget about the buddy? <laughs> Every time we establish the buddy system, Dave thinks it's a thing you do once. And then they, they're like, I did it. I won. I won the buddy system. Back to not doing the buddy system. <laughs> It's like it's like when you play werewolf and you're the medic. You can save some. You can save yourself, but never twice in a row. <laughs> just what is, the attention span is just gone. Sal was right, though. I felt better having done something physical for a change, giving my mind a chance to focus on something else helped. But I was tired more so for it. Turning off the light, I got back in bed and lay on my belly, imagining the gentle rise and fall of Sal's chest in lieu of him not being there. Getting a water bed might be something I'd need to look into after all. <laughs> to just constantly imagine your bed is Sal. <laughs> you are down bad. At first I thought it was the idea of being gently rocked to sleep that I liked more. But the more I lingered on the thought, it became clear that I wasn't, it wasn't the motion but Sal himself. Sighing out, I got comfortable and willed myself to sleep. Not that I had to try very hard. Today was a rest day, but no doubt tomorrow was going to be another day of the unknown to deal with. That was a quick day. Sure Ta -da. was. What did we do that day? We woke up and went to the gym. And then had a conversation. And then went to <laughs> that was a quick one. Goddamn. All right. Well, next time then. <laughs>